Most people think the real action in a storm happens at ground level, but the truth is the upper levels of a storm hold the secrets to its true power. From towering tops to rippling waves, what's happening above can tell you exactly which storms are worth paying attention to. In this video, we're going to unlock the secrets of the upper atmosphere to help you understand how features like overshooting tops, anvils, and even gravity waves shape the intensity of these storms. We will talk about how to spot these features in real time and use them to predict severe weather. We'll also break down the science behind these upper level features and, more importantly, we'll talk about practical tips on what to look for the next time you might be watching the skies. If you've ever seen a storm with a little bubble poking above its anvil, you've just spotted an overshooting top, a sure sign that you're dealing with one of the atmosphere's heavy hitters. These tops mean business and the storm underneath is working overtime to show off its strength in the upper atmosphere. Overshooting tops happen when a storm's updraft gets so strong it punches straight through the tropopause into the stratosphere. In many ways, this is a storm reaching for the stars. That little dome you see above the anvil is the storm's way of saying, I mean serious business. From space, overshooting tops look like bright white spots sitting on top of the anvil. On infrared satellite images, they show up as colder than their surroundings, a clear sign of a powerhouse storm. To a storm chaser, Overshooting tops look like a dome poking above the otherwise flat anvil. An overshooting top is the storm's way of flexing its muscles. A strong, persistent top means the updraft is firing on all cylinders and the storm is likely producing, or about to produce, severe weather. Overshooting tops are nature's neon sign saying something big is happening here. When a supercell's updraft reaches what is known as the equilibrium level, it's like the cloud has reached its ceiling, it's topped out. But instead of stopping, all that energy spreads out into a massive anvil cloud that can tell forecasters a whole lot about the storm's health and strength. The anvil forms as the storm's updraft hits the equilibrium level, the point when a rising current of air in an updraft finally hits a layer where the temperature is the same. With nowhere else to go, the air spreads out horizontally, creating that iconic flat cloud layer. Think of it as the storm's footprint on the upper atmosphere. The bigger and bolder the footprint, the stronger the storm underneath. A large, expansive anvil stretching far away from the storm is usually a sign of a healthy, well-ventilated thunderstorm updraft. On satellite imagery, these wide anvils can cover entire states, showing just how much energy the storm is working with. A crisp, well-defined edge means the storm is ventilating efficiently, keeping its updraft strong and organized. This is a storm still in its prime. A wispy, diffuse edge, on the other hand, might suggest upper-level winds are shearing the anvil apart or that the storm is starting to weaken, neither of which is favorable for a major severe weather. And additionally, storm chasers love Mamatis clouds. While these clouds might not tell you much scientifically, but they sure make for great shots. Framing them against the fading light can create dramatic photography opportunities. The anvil is the storm's calling card in the sky, giving clues about its strength, its organization, and its potential for severe weather. Storms don't just make wind and rain, they can also make waves called simply gravity waves. These subtle waves might not grab your attention, but they can have a big impact on how storms behave, sometimes supercharging them and sometimes shutting them down. Think of tossing a rock into a pond. When the rock hits the water, ripples spread out. Those ripples are like gravity waves in the atmosphere created by anything that moves air around, like thunderstorms, mountains, or even weather fronts. 
If a gravity wave lines up with a supercell's updraft, it can give the storm an extra kick, strengthening rotation and increasing its severe weather potential. There is some scholarship this was instrumental in supercharging the storm that produced the Joplin EF5. Gravity waves can also help create just enough lift to spark new storm development. It is notoriously difficult to forecast gravity waves on a localized level. At the very top of a supercell's updraft, where the air is cold enough to freeze, something fascinating happens called glaciation. This icy process not only shapes the storm's appearance, but also fuels its strength in a surprising way. Glaciation is when water droplets in the storm's updraft freeze into ice crystals. It happens high up near the anvil, where temperatures are far below freezing. When this freezing occurs, it releases latent heat, a hidden energy boost that helps the updraft climb even higher, giving the storm extra fuel to keep roaring. Storm chasers can spot glaciation in storms as a bright, wispy appearance near the top of the updraft, especially where it merges with the anvil. These icy tops tend to look smoother and less turbulent compared to the lower boiling parts of the storm. Glaciation is a sign of a powerful updraft reaching its peak, a critical step in the storm's life cycle. When you see the upper parts of a storm looking smooth and icy, you're likely looking at a well-glaciated updraft. Pair that with a strong anvil and an overshooting top, and you've got a storm firing on all cylinders. Glaciation is the storm's icy crown, a visual marker of both power and potential of a supercell. Forecasters can also monitor storm health by another measurement easily seen on radar, echo tops. When the radar lights up with storms on a chase day, it can feel like picking a needle out of a haystack to storm chasers. That's where echo tops come in. To skilled storm watchers, it is a radar-based cheat code to finding the most intense storms in a crowded field. Echo tops are a radar measurement showing the highest point in a storm where precipitation is detected. The taller the echo top, the stronger the updraft pushing that precipitation skyward. In most cases, higher echo tops mean the storm is packing more energy and likely producing stronger updrafts. And that's where you'll often find the most severe weather. On radar, forecasters for storms with the highest echo tops typically measured in thousands of feet. These are the storms likely producing the strongest updrafts and, in turn, the most significant hail, wind, or tornado potential. However, there are exceptions to every rule. A storm with high tops but a weak radar signature at lower levels might not be producing much severe weather yet. On the flip side, a storm with slightly lower echo tops but a well-defined hook or strong rotation could still be the star player of a day. Forecasters must confirm what they are seeing on the radar with observations from storm chasers in the field. Echo tops give a high-level view of storm intensity. While they aren't the only factor to consider, they're a valuable tool that help forecasters zero in on the storms most likely to deliver severe weather. Another area storm chasers check before heading out are upper-level model charts, focusing in on areas with strong divergence aloft. These are often where storms will thrive the most. Wise storm chasers focus their chases near these zones for a better chance at catching a powerful, well-organized storm. From overshooting tops to gravity waves and echo tops, the upper atmosphere is packed with clues about storm intensity. These clues help both storm chasers and weather forecasters stay ahead of a storm's severe weather threats, sometimes well in advance of other clues. So remember, the next time you look up at a storm, you'll see the sky in a whole new way as your gaze goes towards the heavens to the upper levels of a supercell thunderstorm.